Well, what the other one? I think it's perfect. So today, this morning, we are in... I'm not sure which national forest this is. We are on a foraging trip. No taste like home, and we're foraging. There we go. Native plants and. Benny, what did you put in your mouth, bud? Sourwood. I gave him a sourwood leaf. Native plants and fruits and whatnot. So it's pretty fun. Right now we're on a mushroom forage, and unfortunately, all the ones we found so far are inedible. In Edible. Ooh, Bridget found a nice big one. I found a lot of little, well, they call them fairy parasols. <laughs> little umbrella, tiny little umbrella looking things. But you can eat violet leaves, sourwood leaves, hemlock needles. What else did we see? All sorts of neat stuff. Oh, we found black birch. You can make birch beer out of the twigs. Those tasted really good. Uh, here's a deer, uh, Parker's Berry Bridge. Yeah. Mama. Now I want to taste it, Ben. Is this your day? It doesn't taste like much. Yeah. Mine has no yellow. I'm not yellow. Why not we just trade? What are you talking about? Right. Trade right. You want the. The brife that has a yellow handle? Mm -hmm. You got it. You have the, the black. Cool. Thank you. We created brife. Daddy and I. So I found somebody else out foraging. Who? This big old millipede. Is he looking for dry old leaves? Old leaves, funguses. Yeah, he'll eat mushrooms too. Excellent. Let's go first. Um, Oh, pig snows. Where do pig nose go? You put them with the mushrooms. Okay. I can't read. Here we go. Now we can kind of see all the stuff. What'd you find? What's this? Snail snail. Ooh, it's a nice big one. This is. Let me go crush it. So what is this? Like, like, lichen. A type of lichen. You're right. I want to pass around a piece so everyone can feel it. This is a really special plant. Well. Not a plant, it's a lichen. A lichen is an algae and a fungi that have created a symbiotic relationship. So if you pull on this, do I D this correctly? This is called usnea or old man's beard. <laughs> I know, I look good. What is this big heart shaped leaf? Um, violet. Violet. V for violet, right. And why, how do we remember heart shape, right? Because it's Valentine's no, special I'm flower. Good. And the flowers, the purple flowers, the yellow and white flowers that come from it are also all edible. The whole plant is edible. So what is the rosemary looking stuff from the pine tree right there called? Hemlock. hemlock. Eastern hemlock. Excellent job. Right, not the one that killed Socrates, right? That's the the carrot family plant that we that doesn't grow around here. And what's the squishy stemmed magic plant? Why, right, and if you put it in your wallet, your money never runs out. And this is the one that glows silver under the water. What is this one good for? Um, poison ivy. Excellent job, right, and it has a big juicy stem, it's almost translucent, it's actually really cool, right? And it's easy to identify, it has big, pretty, like broadly, like goose foot shaped leaves that are very gently toothed on the edges and they're rounded, right? And I always notice it because it has that shiny purple to green stem that's full of liquid. Very cool. Does that work on any itch, like a bug bite? Yeah, it does totally. We put a little bit. Of, actually, it's gone I'm down. Mommy it's gone down. down. Oh, see if you can see it. Oh, yeah, amazing. It totally works. I'm Don't itch it more, though. Don't scratch it. Now you're bringing it to the surface again. So, after we divvied up all of the things that we collected on our foraging trip, we took our haul to a restaurant here in Grove Arcade in downtown Asheville. It was a really cool building. It was built in the 1920s and has all these really neat architectural details and some amazing atria and then afterwards we just sort of wandered around downtown Asheville and checked out the cathedral here which has a, a it's a basilica and it has just really really neat architecture inside in fact the the man who designed the supposedly largest freestanding stone dome in the United States is buried here in the basilica itself. And then we came back to our restaurant and we had 
a lovely tea prepared by the chef and a little salad made out of the violet and sourwood leaves that we collected. And the tea is made from the hemlock needles that we collected while we were out walking around in the woods. Very, very cool. You gonna eat some of the salad of the leaves that you made with the strawberries? It has mostly violet leaves and sour wood. And it has a strawberry balsamic vinaigrette and some strawberries and onions. It's delicious, some goat cheese. The sour wood is a little dense. I think it's not an application we would necessarily have at home, but it's delicious. They also recommended using them as wraps for fish. the cooking fish. That's how I would like to try it next. I would like to send you out to get some. And then I would like to wrap some sort of fish. Or she said under chicken. It's really good. All of those sound delicious. Tough to beat this for the last night here at the cabin. <laughs> Got us a little creek chiner, creek chub, one of the two. Come on, focus. There it goes. Yeah, let's go in it. Our last day in uh, the Mountain Fiesta Cabin before we go up to Hot Springs for our the Wild Goose Festival. And there's this little tiny, and I mean tiny, like what, two pews deep, little tiny chapel here along the side of the road. It's very pretty. Huh. It is teensy in here. And all the stuff left for prayer. It's the lady who built it. Owns the Trust General Store and Cafe, which is right down the hill. We're gonna go get some ice here in a minute. And she survived a bout of non-Hodgkin's non -Hodgkin, non lymphoma. And when she was done with her treatment, she built this place right here. Makes this beautiful stream. It's a way to say thank you and to offer fellow travelers a peaceful place to come and rest their spirit. Pretty cool. And now, come over here and look at this little gingerbread house. Really cute little house. Reminds me of something out of Hansel and Gretel. It is empty. It looks like it's just a kitchen. Looks like a sales counter. There's a big range and prep counters in there. This looks like the seven dwarves should be hanging out in there. All right, we're off to Hot Springs. Here we are, our campsite, the Hot Springs Resort Campground, our tent. And let me show you the view out our back window. Got the fall line right there. So we got some nice rapids going. The French Broad River. Let's see if we can get down here without walking through too much poison ivy. Nice. Once again, we find ourselves on the Appalachian Trail which goes over the top of Rich Mountain and also on top of Rich Mountain. Fire tower up here. So we are going to climb it. We've got some grumbly kids. But we're gonna head on up there, see what we can see from up top. Wow, it is pretty up here. We could see none of this last time we were up here. All the boards are there. 
Yeah. yeah. Actually, can you just take our picture? Yes. Maybe all of our pictures? Don't picture? let them fall down there. Maybe prop it like in that corner? No. We won't. Don't. We won't let them fall. Don't worry. See our car from up here? Yeah. That big. Yep, there it is, way down there. Man. I can bend my head. What a view. What? Last time we were here, last year, it was so cloudy. The, the tower itself was shrouded in clouds. Pretty cool to see it the way it is today. All right. So now we're off to get some lunch and take the kids to my sister's for the weekend. And there will be more to come from Wild Goose. Late Saturday afternoon. I'm not sure how loud this is. It's kind of noisy with the fan blowing in here. Wild Goose is starting to wind down. A couple of really good days. Meeting new people and hearing people's thoughts about different social issues and other things. Just another couple sessions and we'll have some dinner. And then uh, the big concert at the end of the festival is tonight. And so if I don't get a chance to uh, shoot any video tomorrow because we'll be going to the closing ceremony and then packing up and heading down to Charlotte to get our kiddos. Yeah, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you enjoy this uh, small slideshow that I put together here of, of some photos that I took uh, during the weekend here. And uh, thank you for joining us. Remember, you can find adventure anywhere, so get outside and find an adventure of your own. And if you want to keep up with our adventures, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks. See you next time. Uh, just because past me didn't have a chance to shoot any video packing up and going to Charlotte to get the kiddos. At the end of this video is a special recording that I made at Beer and Hymns, which uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a bunch of people who get together at a brewery, drink a, some good beer, and play and sing hymns. It's kind of fun. Anyway, Wild Goose had a, a beer and hymns tent every night, and after the big show, Saturday night, John Mark McMillan, the headliner, came down and joined Beer and Hymns and played his, probably his most popular song uh, with the group. So after the slideshow, if you want to stick around for that, please do. Uh, it was kind of a special moment. So anyway, back to the slideshow.